clean rooms. This, these guys in a bunny suit. This is a clean room that when the people are in it, maintains the same rating. That's what's important here. They are dressed in a bunny suit. They get into a, a room first. They put on their bunny suit. They get blown off and they go into another room. And while they're in the room, the main, it maintains its same clean room rating. Okay? The ratings go like this. This is the old rating system. There is a new rating system. These are the two. I will talk about the old one here because no one, even though the new one exists, it will, they will just print both of them on there. They, they, uh, people still like to talk about a clean room under the old classification, which is a class 10, things like that. So we are on page 77. So if you look down the list here, what you'll notice is that the numbers are equal to 0.5 microns. So what that means is that you have a maximum number of particulates that will float around in the air per a cubic foot of air. So you have a cubic foot of air, and inside that cubic foot of air, you have particulates that float around, contaminants that float around inside that air. So when you're cleaning it, you're pushing it through a filter. You're filtering off those items. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to make sure that you don't have well, you don't have a larger amount of bigger items in your particulates. You want the smallest possible. So you filter them down through the smallest amount. So your HEPA filter will then filter stuff down, in this case, to 0.5 microns. There will only be 100 of them in a cubic foot of air, and that will give you a class 100. Does that make sense? So if you have 100 little particulates floating around in one cubic foot of air, that are of 0.5 microns that is class 100. If you go down to a class 10, you only have 10 in that same space. So you have a filter that is more finite and will then filter that content out. So when you're looking at a, a clean room, these are the numbers that are important to you. Now, normally for a hard drive, you want at least class 100. I have a class 10. Now, these things are rated according to what they are when they are empty, when nothing's in them. Now, as I already told you, the first one that stays the same rating with the dude in the bunny suit. When we are working on ours, it's going to pass through, and I'll show you right here. Like, this is my clean room. So this, it sits on a table, and it goes to the ceiling. It is a double wide, so two people can stand side by side. And what happens is air is sucked in through the top and there is a laser filtration system in the back, and then it pushes it out the front. This is a HEPA filter right here. It pushes air towards me. And then there's plexiglass around it so I can work and the air comes at me. So if you spit, it's back in your face. You don't spit into the wind, right? Got it? That's the way that goes. Now, if my hands are in it, I have now affected its classification. So it, it's classified as a class 10 when it's empty. When I put something in it, its classification then kind of changes. But it's a class 10, and I put my dirty hands in it, so now I've affected how many particulates are in the air. Now luckily for me, they're blowing at me. So if your hard drive is in here, and you're working over it, it's going to blow this way and not that way. Make sense? There are different types of clean rooms that use something called positive airflow. So there are some that push from the top down instead of at you. And what they use, they use a deflector shield. So they'll have like a back panel that will then just deflect it. So the air pressure will then deflect this way, pushing it towards you. Okay? So if you're looking for one, that's what you're really looking for is a class 100 or a class 10. Either one will probably be better than anything else that you're probably going to get otherwise. Well, everything's done by the HEPA filter itself, which is a high efficiency particulate air filter. That's what that means. High efficiency particulate air. It's not a brand name or a vacuum cleaner or anything. It's a high, high, particulate, high efficiency particulate air filter. What happens is they pleat a certain type of material and they put it inside of a metal frame. And they fill that with something like silica, borite silica or some type of silica, so that when it's filtered, that it's all captured behind the filter. And so that's how mine works, is that it captures it all in this big back filter right here, and then pushes it out towards me, sucks it in through the top like an air conditioner does, and then pushes it out. Very efficient. It works really well. Um, there's no real 
side effect. There's nothing. I'm not going to spend $100,000 and go build a room where I can put on a bunny suit and go jumping around in it. That doesn't make any sense. There, how much does this cost? Um, my particular one, the company's actually out of business now, but I bought it for around three and a half, four thousand dollars or something. Whereas you can find other ones now. Now we have a great resource that we didn't always have, like eBay, which uh, you'd be surprised now at what people sell. This is very similar to mine, and it was six ninety nine. Now you can, depending on where you live, the only I'll tell you the only problem with a lot of these things is their local pickup wherever you go. So if you live in New York and you want to find one and it's in California, they will tell you, you must figure out how to get it home and that you somehow have to get there and look at it. The only thing I would say is if you go to look at one locally ever and you try to find one that you're going to pick up that was already used, like this one was, you want to smell it. If it was used in a chemical company, then it will rank when you put it in your little warehouse to work on. You don't want that smelling up your whole area. So you do want to go smell it. That's the whole thing I would say. But, uh, but I've known several people who have bought stuff off of eBay. They've been pretty happy with it. Sometimes you may have to change the HEPA filter in the back. And that may cost more than the whole device. Really just depends on what kind it is or what it is. So did, did, you, buy, uh, did you buy one yet, a positive airflow? Or? I like the one you have, honestly. I like the bench height. I like the bench height. Yeah, right. I mean, mine's, mine's nice, but that particular company's out of business. They don't make them anymore, but maybe you can... Mine's made more like a cabinet. Like, this is, a, this is all cabinet, like textile stuff, and... Uh, I mean, you saw it. You know what it is, yeah? So, except for the fact that the cabinet stuff cracks as you move it. So, when you move it, you might get some cracks across it or something like that. It's just the outside, that Formica stuff that cracks, but... But, uh, but it holds up really well, and it's heavy. This one's a double wide, so this one's going to be pretty heavy. But there's lots of ways to get them, and there's lots of cheap ways. And then, like I said, there is, if you want to look for one, and you're on eBay, this is what you do. You, uh, do a search for a workflow bench. And then you'll find a whole list of different ones, HEPA filters, different containers. Like this one's a vertical, so this one's a lot more like mine. That one's looks, it might even be brand new. Uh, and then you can look for used ones. This is a used one here, obviously. And then so I would go look this one up and I would try to find out what it's what it is. But at 400 bucks, I can't even buy the metal for that if I wanted to try to make something. But you may have to replace the actual filter itself. Here's the search phrase used again. Uh, it is work flow bench. That's what you're looking for. How long does filter last? Um, usually it's done by rated per an hour, so a number of hours. But you know, roughly you're looking at three to four years or something in that neighborhood. So, and then depending on how much those particular filters cost. But uh, generally, I don't keep mine on, and I don't have like, you know, there's no woodworking going on around it or anything like that. Like it's like I keep it in a clean environment, so it, it will last a little bit longer, and we only turn it on when we're using it. So those are the other things. So, but uh, this is more like what you would look at. Was up. so portable ones are usually going to be the positive airflow. So this is the container up here. And like I said, you can get one of these roughly for about a thousand bucks. It looks about like this. So, and then you can go looking for others. Like this is one. I mean, these are nice looking ones, but you need to look them up to find out what they what they look like. And then, and let's see, you can do a positive, and then that would normally change your airflow. So that's what they're looking for is those airflow benches or whatever. So you would look for. Whew. That's obviously not the right one, but you get the point. That's what you're looking for is a flow bench. And all you're trying to do, as we already mentioned, is we're trying to keep out the things that might stick to a platter. So what sticks to a platter is oil. Your skin, your hair, your body parts, things like that, your spit. Those are the kind of things that stick to a platter and cause damage. Whereas 
even though dust is mostly human in a lot of cases, it's drier. And so when it hits the platter, if you spin up the platter, it will fly off. So it usually doesn't get in a lot of the way. But you'll notice as you're doing it this week, it's going to get better and better and better. It's going to start out bad and you're going to have a terrible looking platter and you know, you can use it for lunch tomorrow. But <laughs> after that, you know, coasters and frisbees. And then Thursday, it'll actually start looking good and you'll start having them come out shiny looking. Uh, there is a filter in the back, as I mentioned earlier. And this is a picture of some of the stuff that as it, as it dwindles and starts to tear up the disc, that things start, will start moving back here behind the filter. filter. Those are the things that make their way back up into the platter and do damage. You can make a little tiny portable glove box like this, but, uh, and there's a lot of sites that are dedicated. I put the site for this one, and I made two or three of these before. So I've bought the materials and made them. But now this pile of material is like two to $300 by the time you're done with the pile of material. If I was gonna do this, why not spend 600 bucks on a bench that's already done and just do whatever I got to do there. That would make more sense. But it is portable and small and the idea is you work inside of it and you, uh, you cut out plexiglass and put it here so you can see through it and you make uh, armholes where you can work on it. Then you hook it up to a vacuum cleaner actually. On one side you'll put a HEPA filter and you suck air out and on the other side you put a HEPA filter that's just there like a square open hole and then you can make a portable one. And I sold a couple of these for like $200 wasn't worth it. It took a lot more time and energy and money than they were worth. But uh, you can make one if you need to. Now, other tools that you need to talk about is